Item number SCP-6560, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. Following is a successful containment of SCP-6561 at Site-64 in 1979. No additional instances of SCP-6560 have been manifested. Surviving samples collected from SCP-6560 instances prior to SCP-6561's confinement are currently contained within high-security document preservation containers within the storage wing of Site-64. Archive containment procedures. Upon discovery of a new instance of SCP-6560, MTF Gamma-5 Red Herrings and MTF Iota-10 Damn Feds are to be dispatched to establish a secure perimeter of the location as well as detain any witnesses. Upon establishment of secure perimeter, samples and photographic documentation of the instance are to be collected and catalogued. Catalog samples are currently preserved within high security document storage containers at Site-64 for later study and cross-reference. The remainder of the instance is to be incinerated on site. Investigation into any connection between SCP-6560 instances is ongoing. Description SCP-6560 refers to a phenomenon that occurred within the Pacific Northwest region of the United States between 1950 and 1979, in which uninhabited human settlements constructed entirely out of a combination of paper products would spontaneously manifest within rural areas. Such settlements range in size from 0.5 kilometers squared Two, ten kilometers squared, I would follow urban planning conventions appropriate for the era. Building materials would vary by instance, with examples including cardboard frames, roofing, and furniture, newspaper wallpaper, confetti insulation, paper board doors, paper towel curtains, toilet paper carpeting. While the number of structures in each instance was variable, all instances of SCP-6560 would contain, at a minimum, a post office, a general store, a welcome sign designating the settlement's name and population, and at least two residential houses. All structures would be fully furnished at the time of discovery with appropriate paper product equivalent of typical furniture for each respective building. Additionally, documents containing identifying information and business transactions of supposed residents of the instance could be recovered from SCP-6560 instance interiors. While all documents were authentic and appropriate for the era, jurisdiction of the SCP-6560 instance, investigations by Foundation agents proved all individuals identified within such documents to have never existed. SCP-6560 instances discovered to date include Dorrance Mill, Washington, Port Prosperity, Idaho, Pine Knot, Oregon, Green Seas, Oregon, South Periwinkle, Oregon. Of note, there is not a North Periwinkle, Oregon. Maiden Tree, Washington, Wagon Rest, Oregon. Due to the frailty of SCP-6560 instances to withstand the elements, as well as their long-term structural instability, containment of SCP-6560 instances proved impossible. As a result, containment efforts focused on the preservation of individual samples and photographic documentation. Addendum 6561, SCP-6561 Containment On March 3rd, 1979, an investigation by MTF Tower 51, Urban Brawl, correlated all SCP-6560 instances to a series of roadmaps published by various local travel companies. 
Further investigation identified the author of these maps to be Stephen Klaus of Astoria, Oregon. Mr. Klaus, hereafter referred to us as SCP-561, operated as a freelance cartographer within various map-making firms within the Pacific Northwest during the time period of SCP-6560's activity, in addition to all known SCP-6560 instances. A review of the maps created by SCP-6561 revealed an additional three SCP-6560 instances that had previously remained undiscovered by Foundation personnel. SCP-6561 was apprehended by Foundation personnel on May 4th, 1979. Interviews conducted with SCP-6561 upon capture suggested that he was unaware of SCP-6560's existence and that the names of all SCP-6560 instances have been publications of his included on his maps as a means of protection against copyright infringement. A practice correctly known among cartographers as Paper Towns.